Welcome to the episode of the Bourbon Experience, and today we took a trip to another distillery here in Ohio, and this one happens to be here in Columbus, Ohio. Actually, it's probably the biggest one here mm -hmm. in Columbus, by, Ohio. By, by a mile. By a mile. Wow, that's big. Uh, Middle West Spirits right here, and uh, had a nice little tour, and so we thought we'd go, you know, we, we bought a few of their products, and we've had them before. We've kind of showcased a few of their things before i think I we should think with that's it is it it have we, yeah. have we not showcased yeah, it i've never had this before until right. today and i thank god I, that i did yeah <laughs> um so anyways uh this is another part of the series of you know adding on to the tours that we when we go down to kentucky but this is something we've decided to do throughout the summer is to try to take a look at some different places here in ohio because we think ohio has something to be said for the bourbon world damn right in, in a mm. sense. So we thought we'd take a, a, a little bit of a jump there and, and, and go over that. So anyways. Okay. Um, so our third stop on the trolley was Middle West. Was Middle West. First one we hit was M&O yep. down in Asheville. Uh, then we hit uh, um, High Bank. High Bank, which is right here in Columbus, Ohio, and then and then Middle West. So, um, okay, well we first, uh, let's go over kind of what we bought. First thing was, is, is, is there bourbon? Um, and this one is, I'm gonna mispronounce it. Yeah, the Michelone. Michelone. Which I, I always call it the Michelon. The Michelon. Because I, I looked at it as French, but yeah. the the tour guide pronounced it, at least what they say is properly. And it should be properly because it's one of the owner's great grandfathers. Yeah. <laughs> which, the, it's some of the history that they did, and I'm, I'm big on the history, they had yeah. a lot of little, little, little nuggets throughout the evening that were, or day that was. A, with history written, and, and yeah. that that was that was really well, cool. And one of the co-owners is a fourth generation distiller. Mm -hmm. This this particular co-owner though is the first legal legal distributor. So the other three generations were moonshiners mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. Uh, but it was just interesting to see how they came together to here in Columbus from opposite ends of the country, and started producing bourbon and yeah, and, mass and marketing a, it, and just another another. You know other, you know uh, yeah other spirits. other spirits. So okay. which I think we should talk about also. But sure. So we we've, we've got that in front of us, which that was a tasty one, and then we also got their one of their new ryes. Yeah. yeah. So this um, is their dark pumpernickel rye that is aged in ported uh, yeah. uh, uh, wine casks uh, or yeah port casks. Uh, so we've got a, a double matured uh, spirit here that is. Which is interesting because they do, they with their rye, they don't really no, use a normal grain of rye. They mm -hmm. use a, a pumpernickel rye across the board in all of their, in their mashes. Yeah. So it does give it, I think, a little bit of a different uh, uh, flavor yes. to it, which is, is kind of unique, which I like. Yeah. So. Well, and I, and I like the fact that, you know, they, they initially started off, they were importing their, their ryes from... From north of the north, most of it from north of the border. Yep. Uh, but since then, they have gone all of their stuff here in Ohio. Yeah. Uh, because they would take the winter season to plant the rye with some of the farmers, which was cool, yeah. and grow during the winter. So I, I thought that was kind of a neat, you know, a neat addition. Thing. So you know, and I don't know if that changes the flavor of the rye, you know, in the growing season or not. I don't. Uh, it, it could I don't grow. know. Smarter people than me can tell tell you that. Yeah. But it was just neat to, that this is how they do things. All their stuff or all their bourbons and, and rye, it's all four grain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just they'll they'll define a weeder as something that's higher in wheat than rye. You know, whereas some of the other in the industries would just say, well, it's just a four grainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, anyways, so I figured what we'd do is we'd, we'd first start tasting and, and, and kind of give a review, but also while we're doing that, talk about the actual trip itself, you yeah. know, and, and how we felt about it. So, yep. all right, well, first one is, is, is the whiskey. Uh, this is a 95 proof. Uh, if I recall correctly, I believe it, you know, obviously 5% of uh, is um, oh, the multiple. Thank you, as, as, bar, as barley. Uh, a 16 wheat, 11 uh, rye. Yes, so not a very high rye. I like the nose. Oh yeah, the nose is very nice. Yeah, it it um it, it, it definitely has. What's interesting is when we had this earlier today, uh, I had a little bit of a spearmint with the bourbon, which usually you don't get because of the rye 
I had a little bit of a spearmint taste in that. So yeah. the, I, it'd be interesting to see if I get that again. Yeah. And so like I, I'm getting just a soft wheat funk mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. on the nose, uh, but there's going to be that little spice element on the back. I haven't taken a sip of this yet, but earlier today when during sure the is. tour, it, 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 it hits every bullet point and it's, it's really masterfully blended uh, as a, or the recipes masterfully worked. Yeah. I think it, 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 it's, I think a very uh, combined, you know, very fine line between having a rye and a bourbon and putting them together. Like you've got that, that spice that comes in at the very end. You have the, the typical bourbon kind of flavors, you know, the char, mm -hmm. the, 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 the caramels, that, that kind of, that kind of toffiness, whatever at the very beginning. And, and it kind of melts together, I think. Yeah. So it's almost kind of like having a rye with a bourbon in a sense. Yeah, yeah. except it tastes better than a burr rye. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, some of the burr ryes we've had, I haven't, you know. Uh, I'm just not a fan. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, uh, Redwoods, hoping that that was going to yeah. be, and, and it, yeah. it was okay. We've had another. It, it's a little bit more on the pricey side, I think, for a, a small batch, in my in my opinion. Uh, it, you know, I think I spent, it was almost 50 bucks. Yeah, for, for tax for, for, with taxes and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more on the on the pricier end for my tastes, uh, but uh, I, this is my first bottle that I bought. I've had it before. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's a little different than your normal bourbons. Yeah. I think so. In terms of a comparison with other weeded bourbons, like where where would you put this in terms of a comparison to say Weller Special Reserve? Or Maker's Mark 101, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Maker's 101. Uh, okay, or regular Makers. Or regular Makers. Uh, it's it's fuller than I would say that than those. Um, it's a little bit it's a little bit more complex than that uh, than the Makers. Uh, then what was the other one you said? You asked for oh a Weller. Uh, you know, uh, you, were you saying antique or were you special reserve? Special reserve. You know. Uh, it's a little bit more than Special Reserve, I would say, but you know, there's still some things about Special Reserve that's nice that I that I still like. That you know, again, when I don't go, we've talked about this before. When you don't have it every day, mm -hmm. and you have it like every, you know every now and then, it's nice. This yeah. one's a little bit more fuller, I would say. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. I don't know. That's yeah, I, 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 yeah. I think so. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I and I, I think the the pumpernickel rye adds to a mouthfeel on this thing yeah. that just is well i mean just to, to steal a word from adam delightful yeah <laughs> no i i think that that's probably the, the the difference of it right that's the difference of some of the other bourbons which is why I, it's unique for me and i like it so uh, and and you know me if it's has anything that's different mm -hmm. Whether you know, I'll, I'll probably be more more inclined to have right, it. This tastes like dog food, man. I think I'm gonna have a bottle. Of this <laughs> yeah, right. Here's a nice piece of shit. The tour was quite interesting. Um, you know, we've been through a lot of tours, so a lot of the the mash and stuff like that. But um, our tour guide was really did a good job, I think, explaining mm -hmm. uh, the history of the company. The, the history, yeah. You know, I thought the history stuff was kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I did too. And and that's what we started off with, a little bit of the history. Also, she did, I think, a good job of, you know, kind of giving you the, how they do it in layman's terms. Uh, you know, and there was kind of some ways that were a little bit more picturesque in my brain where I go, oh, that makes a little bit more sense yeah. of how you do it. Well, she had energy for days. Uh, Sydney, I think, was her name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you so know, Sydney had you know, discussed about a lot of things. I mean, she really kind of covered a really broad scope of their operation on, on history and process and all that. The other thing that, that she said that we first found out is they actually source their product out to other distillers to make uh, stuff. And um, well, obviously a bunch of them with NDAs, so we didn't uh, find, well, we found out Horse Soldier, I think it was, yeah, was, it? It was there. You know, yeah. It was, was the only one she mentioned uh, off the top of her head. Yeah. Uh, but it was, just, it was just interesting that, you know, they produce enough um, that it actually benefits other companies in getting started with their products. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, nice bourbon, really good. 
let's give this one a go. Let's give yeah. this rye a taste, huh? You know? Oh, I don't mind if I do. Now, we did taste this. We did. She did give us a tasting of this right at, uh, at the very end, right? Yes. Boy, yeah. this sucker's got some nice legs on it. It does. Boy, they're holding. I mean, that, that yeah. is, that's yeah. not letting go almost. No. It's definitely a dark, I mean, that's a pretty dark. So, you know, obviously being a kind of a double oak, that makes... Yeah, but that's rich. You can smell the, mm. the oak on that. This is the one that I, that, that, that it was, had some had body to it. Yeah. It, 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 you could... Yeah, we didn't have thicker. this at the table. It's not the one that no, we had... Not at the table. We were, we were at the, the register. Oh, okay. Right there at the end, yeah. and and we had it a couple times actually, because I okay, I, that's I, right, I remember that. Yeah, uh, you the, can actually find that in store shelves. You can. Yeah, that's hundred, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a hundred. Yeah. So, which again, I think that would be probably my biggest, uh, you know, thing against you know Middle West is just the the, the cost of the juice, yeah. right? You know, uh, it, it's a it's a it's definitely pricey. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about this comparing and, and a little bit later on, but that's a hundred dollar bottle. Man, I don't have very many hundred dollar bottles on my on, on my no. shelf, and it, and I'm not trying to take away from the juice. The juice is good. Yeah. Throw is it a hundred dollars? And I you know and I'm gonna have a sip here and tell you whether I think that or not. It's definitely good juice. I remember that, but. Mm -hmm. I'm and not, this and this is the first time that we're actually getting a good nose on it because the first time we had these little plastic, plastic cups, open-ended yeah. cups. That yeah, you can't, you can't get a nose on it unless you're actually breathing it into your nose, dripping it into your nose. It's got a nice little nose to it. It's, it's mm -hmm. definitely different than a a normal rye. No, the, well, uh, there you're getting that pork cast, that kind of grapey kind of yeah, soft and softening of that spice element. It definitely does that because mm -hmm. I because I'm you know. Usually, uh, 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 I'll get that dusty smell with the rye, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't get a whole lot of that. I still get that rye spice with that. There is some element of it. I think I think it mutes mutes the spearmint a little bit. Yeah. Um, I will say, Middle West tends to give me a a, a, a grip and hug there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, did, I got that. You yeah, did too. I got, I got that out of both of these. Although it's weird, earlier today I wasn't getting it yeah. at the uh, distillery, but. It, Tendency is, they that's usually what they tend to do. That is one of the smoother ryes I think I've had. Like as in, usually that you have a real harsh spice that comes with the rye. Mm -hmm. This was super smooth. Mm -hmm. It was super nice. It went right into uh, a little bit of spearmint, but not a whole lot. Um, uh, I really like the pumpernickel mm -hmm. rye. I really like that. Um, we did. We we weren't shorted on any amount of tries. We had a whole lot, so oh, you know, we had. They, they were very nice to us. Which again, you know, again, not a, not an expensive tour. Uh, what ten bucks, twelve mm -hmm. bucks, right? Um, you know, eight bucks if you have your your Buckeye card. Um, but you know, we had a handful of you know we had had a tray of drinks, and then afterwards they gave us some other ones, and we were to try their vodka, which I mm -hmm. thought was unique, and we can talk a little bit about the vodka compared to other distilleries. Mm -hmm. We can talk about their gin, uh, that was also extremely unique. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, fir the first one was, I didn't, I didn't get much one. out of the the, other the one. second one was, I, I you can go elsewhere and get something else. But anyway, so we we, we had a lot of different drinks, and it wasn't all bourbon. Right. Where other places we've gone before, it was strictly bourbon or a rye or something like mm -hmm. that. So, um, okay, well then let's talk a little bit about um, their, their 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 drinks. So their, their vodka. The, what, what, what do we think about their vodka? And let's compare it to other Ohio vodkas. So in terms of their vodka, I, I really enjoyed it. Actually, I have a bottle of it home. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting on my shelf for a really long time because yeah. I'm not a vodka drinker. I've only ever mixed vodka. I've never drank it straight outside of tastings and this actually gives me an option of when I want to reset my palate I can go to this yeah. and, and, and have it it's nice it's there's it's sweet it's a little fruity um, you know it's a hundred percent red wheat uh, vodka and it just had a, and it had a nice gentle finish to it I, I so that. you know they, there was uh, there wasn't much that I could sit there and really kind of complain about in terms of their vodka, their yeah. their uh, basic vodka. Yeah, I, I in the past, tasting vodka was like drinking 
gasoline, untasteable water. Yeah, uh, and, you know, it's just it's not, not been exciting at all. This had some taste to it. I couldn't tell you exactly what the taste was, yeah. but it, it was unique. Well, and 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 I thought I thought it was uh, it was it was enjoyable for me. So then let's talk about the gin again. You know. Uh, I, I like to kind of compare because a lot of these are, the, you know, but what, what, what do we think about the gins? So yeah, we, had, so, we had two gins. Yeah, the first one was the Vim and Petal. Yep. And then the other one... And it had a ton of stuff. It has juniper, elderberry, wheat berry, which I don't know, what is a wheat, I don't know what a wheat berry is, but anyways. So it's what you, the berry you put the plant to grow wheat. I guess. Okay, 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 uh, coriander, toasted black tea, which I got a lot of the tea out of that. Oh. Sesh, Szechuan peppercorn. Lemon peel, which I got a lot of the lemon peel. Grains, um, epizot, which we, or epizo, or whatever that is, which yeah. is a Mexican. A lot of stuff. So there's all these different flavors, and, and it, it's uh, busy. It is busy. Yeah. It's it's kind of flowery, fruity, and it's busy. Mm -hmm. Would we, okay, so let's kind of compare and contrast. Would you take that over um, what High Banks, uh, and I forget the name of High Banks. Yeah, I can't remember either. Uh, States, Statesman or something? Right, or something like that. Wasn't it something like that? Or State House or something like that. Uh, which you don't quite remember. I I really liked that. I, I enjoyed that one. You know, it had a nice blend on there. So, okay, well, we can talk about all that all we want. Um, uh, bourbon wise, you know, let's talk about the bourbon compared to, you know, M&O or compared to uh, High Bank. Well, High Bank doesn't have a bourbon. High Bank doesn't have a bourbon. I would like to, I, yeah. I'm going to put my statement down saying that even though it's not a bourbon, their whiskey sure drinks like a bourbon. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's pretty doggone close. Yeah. Um, and and I, I would still go with High Bank stuff over, over mm -hmm. this. Uh, you know, <clears throat> and that's not a dig at all. The, the, I think the differences between the two distilleries is where High Bank is really, hey, this is our whiskey, our, our, our bourbon, which I know that they're working on, that it's coming out, but we're going to toy with that, where Middle West is going, hey, we're going to toy it around with our, our vodka, with our, with our, um, you know, with our gins and our whiskeys, and we're going to toy around with all that, where it's a little bit more specific over at, you know, at, at m and where he's... Okay, I'm making. Here's my rye, and then yeah. here, here's my different versions of a, of a whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, well, and but that said, though, High Bank is also. We saw a lot of experimentations in that one in their one room, you know, where and they just re released a cigar cask with that was aged in Amberana, you know. But that's also along the whiskey line, is what I'm correct. saying. Correct. Yeah. Right, but but it's still the same. It's still the same blended distillate. Yeah. So I mean, there's, you know, they are they they're all doing experimentation. Uh, the, these guys are just doing it on a big scale, uh, and maybe they have the, the ability to do that because it's a bigger, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's um, in, in general though. I you know I like high bank stuff just a little bit more. Yeah. Um, you know. I agree with that. Their their exper their experiments in the double oaked realm. Uh, and their single barrel have just been out of this out, world. Out of this world, out of this world. So we've done three tours here in Ohio for low prices. Walked away with a lot of good experiences, a lot of good tasting, mm -hmm. uh, and have been introduced to a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, that I think that Ohio Ohio is really bringing stuff to the table. Yeah. yeah. That I agree with that. I, I, you know, it, Kentucky's always going to be king. It will but be. good. This. Don't don't pass yeah, yeah. on Ohio stuff. Yeah, it's really good. It, it, so it, good tour, ten bucks, nice, uh, trendy little area. So if you're in Columbus, Ohio, and you want to check it out, Middle West is a, is a, is a good place to go take a visit for ten bucks. Not bad at all. And then you can get something to eat there, hit the bar, have a couple of drinks. We I, honestly we should have. I think we should have had a drink at the bar, but that's you know we'll, we'll, we'll try that next time. So anyways, for all bourbon. Have a great one, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.